for joining us. I am Steph Churchill, the marketing manager at Dawn's Appliances, and I have next to me... Corporate chef, Anthony Maria from Dawn's Appliances. Glad so, to be here, crew. <laughs> so thank you for joining us this morning. Um, we have some fun material that we're going to go over for you guys. Um, everyone loves rotisserie, right? And with everyone cooking at home um, during the pandemic, we're going to tell you how to get the rotisserie flavor when you don't have a rotisserie at home. Interesting stuff, crew. This is the best. So the rotisserie method is really going to use you know, all of your convection roast methods. So when I talk about convection roast, let's back it up a little bit. What the convection is, that's that fan in the back of the oven, gang. If you see it there, you're like, is that supposed to be there? Yeah, what that does is that fan turns on and it's gonna move air throughout the oven cavity to give you even heat from top to bottom. And then when we use these precise settings, you know, they turn the oven's elements on at different periods. So when I say we're gonna use the convection roast setting, what we're gonna use is the broiler element, the fan, and the bake element, which if you look down in your oven, you'll see like a flat pan. Don't worry, your bake element's right underneath there. They're hidden mm -hmm. bake elements now for safety reasons. Like mm -hmm. that. And if we could back up for just a second, um, for those who aren't avid cooks like myself, <laughs> so um, let's put this in layman terms. So why are we choosing convection roast rather than convection bake? So we're going to use the convection roast because we're going to cook on all the elements. Whereas if we would use the convection bake, correct question by the way, we would just be using the bake element and the convection fan and the top. Like if we're rotisserieing, like if we're going to do the chicken or we're going to do some pineapple or things like that, you know, it would be all bottom heat and back heat, whereas now all three elements are coming together. So if we like visually, you know, put that pineapple on the rotisserie or like put it on the rack in your oven, you're going to see the broiler element browning it. You're going to see the bake element bringing the heat from the bottom and the fan circulating it all around so it cooks evenly from left to right. Mm -hmm. And you bring up a good point too, talking about pineapple. I feel like most people, when they think about rotisserie, they're thinking about, you know, your chicken, your turkey, mm -hmm. maybe your pork, but really, I mean, it's versatile. You could yeah, do it with you, a lot of different you're foods. You're really thinking about your carnal, you know, your carnage meats and things <laughs> yeah, like that yeah. too, but you know, you could even use like, you know, big heads of like cabbage and roasted vegetables and things like that too. I've gotten, you know, from your garden, if you get those like homegrown garden people, people always give me like produce and things like that. I get these like huge zucchinis that are like, you know, a foot and a half long. So I'll just strip them and cut them in huge pieces mm -hmm. and, you know, really put the rotisserie on it. And, you know, the rotisserie is, when we talk about rotisserie, it's like two parts. It's the seasoning is one, but the method is the other. Right, you know what I mean? right. So it's a, it goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. you know? And with doing it, this convection roast method that you're speaking of, will you get that browned appearance and the same texture that you would with an, you know, on the counter unit or if you're doing, um, you know, we, we sell a Thermador Pro Series wall oven that has the rotisserie accessory. So will you get the exact same flavor, the exact same texture mm -hmm. in your oven with this method that you would with, you know, an actual rotisserie? Great question. Yeah, you're going to see the same method. You're going to see the same end result as you would, you know, in a classic rotisserie. Because, you know, when you talk about the rotisserie, what's going to happen? You know, you talked about the Thermador one that, you know, I've used a ton of times. There's a motor built in the back and, you know, we actually put it on a rack, we put it on the spindles, and we pump it in there and the motor is really moving, you know, consistently moving it. And the fan doesn't go on, and we and the broiler element goes on in the bake element. So now, in the convection roast setting, like we discussed before, all three of those are moving, so we can actually keep it on a rack, raised up, just so there's air underneath it, and it will mimic that same cooking style with the airflow. Right, right. So I know we talked about the method. You also mentioned that seasoning is part of the importance. Mm -hmm. What about just the preparation in itself? So when I picture rotisserie, I picture, you know, a chicken or tur turkey being trussed. Mm -hmm. Is that the right word? Trusses, you got it. Yeah, I know all the kitchen jargon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't look <laughs> that up, I swear. <laughs> you you're, you're expanding with your kitchen jargon. <laughs> yeah. So do you, do, do you have to do the trussing method or any other method in preparation? before your convection roasting mm -hmm. your meats or your produce to get that rotisserie taste. Yeah, awesome. You do want to you know, maintain the same recipe that you did 
from previous. You know, and trussing is a huge part, especially when we're talking about, you know, the chicken or the chicken, or even if you want to do chicken legs or something like that. Those end pieces and things like that will be the first to crisp. And if you've ever done, you know, if you ever forgot to truss it, which I have before, you know, I was just rushing and throw it in, it really, from the rotation, you know, it will make it actually cook uneven. So we want to keep it nice and tight. You know, we want to truss those legs. We want to pin back those, pin back those wings is what we do. So you actually <laughs> pin the wing back and tuck it underneath just so it stays uh, compact. And you want to do that kind of with everything. I know we talk about, you know, the pineapple and things like that too. You know, mm -hmm. you want to make sure the pineapple is cleaned on the sides and, you know, if you're doing more than one item, you want to make sure they're real close in weight too. Mm -hmm. You don't want a chicken that's a pound, pound and a half heavier because the cooking time will vary. So, right. you know, even, you know, you've got to mash them up as close as possible. I mean, it's not, it doesn't have to be, you know, direct on the money, but, mm -hmm. you know. So, talk to me about the pan as well. I'm sure um, if you want that browned look of rotisserie, you know, you're not putting it in a huge pan with very high sides. It probably needs to be something more shallow, right? Yeah, you need a shallow roasting pan, probably an inch to two inches. And you know, you and like I said before, you want to get it on a rack because you need to have that airflow underneath. So, you know, we need a wider pan that's going to cover the whole area and it really helps in cleanup too when you have a bigger size roasting pan. You know, don't get a thinner cookie sheet. You know, it has to have a little bit of uh, heavier gauge metal so mm -hmm. it won't buckle in the oven. Okay? Yeah, that sounds amazing. Yeah, my, my knowledge of rotisserie goes to um, the, the Sam's Club rotisserie <laughs> chicken. Supermarket <laughs> from home and it's already yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, but it's so great to know that you can get that flavor with your oven's just basic convection roast. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming most ovens have this ability, correct? Yeah, yeah it, a wide array of all the ovens that we carry here at Don's Appliances, you know, really have that method. And, you know, truthfully, you can add a little bit of heat to it and things like that too. So, you know, if your recipe calls for you know, around 375, you can take it to 400, 400, 425, like you said, just to get that caramelization. And you know, you want it to look like, just like you bought it at the store. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? We want, we want yours at the, at the grocery store to look even better than the one at home, so. Right, and outside of, um, you know, in interior kitchen units, we sell grills as well that have the rotisserie function. Like we have a few Napoleons that we offer. So can you kind of speak to what the taste difference is between a grill rotisserie and a, a kitchen rotisserie? So the grill rotisserie is gonna be an infrared heat. So that's a totally different heat if you'd see those um, steakhouses that sear steaks, you know, at 900 degrees. That's what that infrared is. It's going to be on the back of the rotisserie, and it's really going to be supercharged and heated a lot hotter because once on the grill we rotate, you're not going to get any heat on the front of the grill. It's all coming from the back. Mm -hmm. So it's a really different taste, different flavor, and really gives you that outdoor feel. I know, like, you know, that's like a lot of guys want to do all the outdoor stuff and things like that but you know still great product still great taste you're gonna love it you know and yeah. like I said Napoleon carries it we have a few girls that have that yeah well I am drooling that sounds amazing <laughs> um, for anyone listening you guys can uh, log into dawnsappliances.com to check out the different appliances we have with rotisserie